you um, It's a very good honor to be here because I know how much this means to the program and to coach to um, have players here, so it's a very good honor to be here. Tell me about your uh, my piece, um, it means a lot to me. Um, it got my jersey number on there. Um, it have the Kool-Aid man on there holding the G, and um, the G means a lot to me. How long did it take to design? Um, I think it took Leo like three weeks. Who played to watch the match? Uh, sir, say it again. To watch the match? Oh yeah, to watch the match, of course. Who played looking ahead to the Texas game? What did you think of Quinn Ewers last year and what are you guys expecting from him this uh, Well, I feel like he's a good player, but right now we're working, we're focusing on fall camp, you know, and being prepared for week one. Did you learn anything from him last season, though? Um, yeah, I just think that he's a good player. What do you like about this secondary and who are some of the young players you're looking forward to see step up in this secondary? Um, I'm looking forward to see um, how Caleb Down. I came now um, step up into being a, um, a player that we really count on this year. You guys are always picking to win the West. There's a lot of buzz this year from picking LSU. Obviously, everyone's picking Georgia to win the league. Is that something you guys can use as motivation? Um, I feel like we just focusing on right now our, ourselves, our identity as a team. You know, every team that we have here, Alabama's had its own identity. Right now, we're more focused on the identity that we're going to be and finding our identity in fall camp what type of team we're going to be for the year. Can you talk about the growth you've seen in Terry and Arnold over the last year? Um, yeah, Terry has came a long way. Um, he's grown great, um, became a, a good player. I feel like he's going to be a player that we can count on to be more comfortable and, and be a um, more leader in the secondary this year. How much confidence does it give you having a partner with, the second, uh, with your second year? Um, good. It's, it's very made me very comfortable being able to partner with Terry Young because I know how he play. I know that he's a great player. So having him on the other side of me or having him in the secondary of me is very important. How does this team mesh with Kevin Steele's personality right now? Um, I feel like um, this team matched Coach Steele well because um, Coach Steele believe in the Alabama defense, which is playing fast and physical and smart and playing together. And everybody knowing their assignment. Talk about that chain, Kool-Aid. Um, it means a lot to me. Um, Kool-Aid man means a lot to me. The G that the Kool-Aid man is holding and also have my number. So all those things into one means a lot to me. It represent me. Uh, well, when it comes to NIL, you know, my family and my team, they um, they work they work and do it. Um, but right now, I really just be focusing on the team, you know, doing what I can for the team and letting them handle all the stuff like that on the outside. Kelly, what do you remember most about the Texas game last year? Um, I just remember it being hot. It was hot. It was hot. <laughs> hot, hot. Yeah, what do you think about playing them again this year? Um, I feel like it will be a, a great matchup again. But like I said, we really just focusing on entering fall, fall camp and uh, finding our identity, you know, trying to find what type of team we're going to be. Do you think uh, very much about this time of year, about uh, all the special things, how people kind of uh, didn't cut to you much? Yeah. Uh, how, how important do you think about that as you, you as a player? Um, well, I always love special teams, even when I was in high school. I feel like special teams are just important as offense and defense. Um, so special teams are very important to me no matter where I'm at. And special teams could be Gunner, it could be anywhere. I mean, I always would play hard at them and do my best at them because I feel like it's just important as offense and defense. Good. What's the biggest challenge in learning coverages in Coach Saban's system? Um, well, um, it's, it's a challenge just learning the system in general, like I said. <laughs> Um, so, one-on-one -on -one with J.C., game on the line, are you making the tackle? Of course. I'm definitely flipping J.C. You're flipping him? Wow. Yes. Okay. Definitely. <laughs> so, um, do you think you can match up to his physicality? Um, yes, I feel like I can match up to J.C.'s physicality. I feel like he's not physical at all, actually. I feel like um, J.C. is very soft. Um, <laughs> you know, that's just how I feel about J.C. So, one-on-one, -on -one, J.C. at receiving. JC do not have a chance to get off the line of scrimmage. Um, <laughs> I just feel like he's he's do not belong out there. You approve of JC's shoes? Um, yes, I seen them. Um, I seen them all this morning. I approve of them. Um, <laughs> I told him to tie them up. That's a secret. He did not want to tie them up. They were tied.
<laughs> sure, this is a tired question for you, but just the, the, the name Kool-Aid, where did it come from? Uh, um, the day I was born, I came out with a smile. My grandma said I had a Kool-Aid smile, so that's how I got the name Kool-Aid. How many times have you been asked that since you got into Alabama? Yeah. Um, a lot, I can't even keep count <laughs> every day. Yeah, I probably get asked every day. What's like, what are your thoughts on the Texas game this year? Um, I feel like it's gonna be a good game, but right now we focusing on we won. You came up short last year. How do you deal with those expectations coming into this year, trying to make sure that you don't? Do that? Um, like I said, I, we we look back on last year and um, learn from the mistakes that we made, you know, and just learn from them and move on to this year and learn from the mistakes to make sure we don't make those same mistakes this year. Are you tired of hearing about Georgia taking over your own role? Um, I mean, I just understand that things like that is going to be happening. They, they've they been winning, so that's part of what you're going to hear, you know what I'm saying? Well, you guys don't go to Lexington, it's at the often. Um, how cool is it going to be to get another SEC stadium checked off, and, and what do you know about them outside looking at? Um, yeah, I feel like it will be a, something that, you know, I never I will play Kentucky, um, so us playing Kentucky and, like you said, playing in another SEC environment will be something that's good for me to check out my list. How much does it drive you to, to get a national title ring while you're at Alabama? Um, it's like a part of the standard. It's something that I really want to do, so that's what we're working hard for as a team. What's key in developing young players? Um, just learning the process, um, making sure they're being very trust, trustworthy, make sure they know the plays, make sure they know what they're doing. What do you tell either transfers coming in or freshmen about the SEC and what makes the conference up with you? Um, that it's very physical and it's physical play by play and play. Dallas said he's the best defensive player in the SEC. What would you say about that? Uh, I feel like Dallas is the best defensive player in the SEC. <laughs> I know it's a year away. What impact do you think that bringing Texas and Oklahoma into the league is going to have? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it just will make the SEC more bigger and better. Can you elaborate on what makes Dallas so good? Um, I mean, Dallas have a drive, um, a motor that um most people don't have. Um, he don't quit. And me as a corner, I know pass rush is very important to my position because we don't get a rush. It's gonna be very hard on me. So. That's why I say I love Dallas the most. Kool-Aid, by one preseason measure, Alabama is one of the least experienced teams in the country. Should that matter at a place like Alabama that, that loses players to the draft every year? Um, say that again? Alabama is one of the least experienced teams in the country in terms of returning starters, seniors, oh, yeah. whatever. Should that matter at a place like Alabama? Um, I feel like, um, like, like, we, like we all know that Alabama is a standard, so we bring guys every year that – as long as you plan upon the standard, Alabama will be the same. You have a unique perspective as a defensive back going against three new quarterbacks. Uh, what have you seen from these guys in terms of stylistic difference that you're playing differently based off of what you think is Um, I feel like those guys are all doing they're doing they're doing good. Um I feel like it's um that's more on the coaches to decide who's gonna be the um, quarterback. Um, just know it's time for someone to separate themselves from others. What has anyone, Kevin, any one of them done anything to separate themselves from your eyes? Or is this something that they've done, whether it's zip on the ball or something Well, you know, I'm not really on that side of the ball to pay attention. Half of the time, I don't even be really just looking to see what they're doing. Like, I'd be more focused on what we're doing on the defensive side of the ball and why I can help the younger guys. On that defensive side, what has Kevin Steele brought to y'all that's maybe different or fresh? Um, Coach Steele about energy to us. Um, he he makes sure that he he's big on eleven guys into the to the ball and that we're peppering the ball and that we're being together and being a unit and everybody knowing their assignment. Who would you lost uh, you lost uh, Jordan Battle and Marco Helms. What have you changed about uh, your your approach to the team in the last six months to replace or fill the, the leadership void? Well, Jordan ba Battle and um, Demarco Helms are good guys. They've been around the program. For, they played here at Alabama for four years, so me coming up under them and learning the defense and learning how those guys did things and the ways that they took was very big to me to help me pass down to the young guys that's coming behind me. Kool-Aid, kind of a offbeat question. Do you have any thoughts on the college football video game coming back? 
Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it'll be very fun. It'll be exciting just for me to be on there because I remember I used to play the game and I was kind of sad when it was taken away. If you could give yourself a rating, what would it be? <laughs> Hopefully a 99. <laughs> Is it tough receiver to go up against the practice on uh, Well, all those guys have their own ways, you know, so it's all those guys give me a challenge. You know, you got guys who are route runners, you got guys who are deep threats, you got guys who release. So I feel like every receiver on our team have their own style, have their own way. So I know going to against this guy, he's going to release well, so that's helping me improve on when guys, when I'm facing a receiver who got releases, or I'm facing a guy who can run routes well, and I got to play a guy in the game that run routes well, it's already been there, so cool, it's all those guys give me a challenge. Uh, how's it being coached by uh, T-Rob? Uh, 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 I feel like T-Rob do a great job at what he do, um, one of the best coaches I've ever been around. I, I love T-Rob. Have you seen Malik Benson uh, transition from the JUCO to into Alabama? I feel like um, he transferred. He transferred well because he works so hard. Um, he plays hard, play by play, day by day. He's just going hard and busting his butt to be a good player. What has been the process for just getting used to a new coordinator like this, especially Alabama, where, like Nick was saying, a lot of his system-based matters is in there. What are the sort of things do you have to get used to with this? Um, like Coach said, like you said, Coach said, um, a lot of things are system based, so it's not really a lot of change. It might be a couple words or stuff like that, but you know, it's not a big of change, and yeah, it's just not really a big change. You know, historically, coaches have used the, you know, don't do anything to embarrass yourself, your family, your teammates, your university for decades. It seems like now, with name, image, and likeness and everything else over the last couple of years, it's tougher to get that message to the student athletes. As a leader, what would you say, advice you would give to coaches and administrators? to be able to get that message through? Um, I feel like um, it takes for the leaders on the team, like me, JC, Dallas, you know, to get the message from coach and uh, give them to the team. Because I feel like players are, they're listening to coach and they hear from coach and they hear from leaders on the team. It just sink in more and more and more to the players to know that we are representing the right things. Do you think it's summer workouts? What do you think it's summer workouts or some young guys maybe that caught your attention the way they're working? Um, I feel like we all working as a team. Like everyone is pushing their butt to get back to the Alabama standard. Like, I mean, I've been seeing days where guys are just exhausted, and it made me catch the chills, man. Just like right now, you're speaking about it, just to know that we're working our butt off to get back to the standard. Can't wait to get back to those guys later today. What are you How about you the guys that you brought in for the transfer portal, Trey and uh, Jalen? Um, I feel like those guys are picking it up very well. I feel like those guys are smart players. Um, they play with great technique and they're listening. They're not they're not trying to do anything out the way or not doing anything. They're just doing their thing. How would you define that standard? Um, the defense standard, I feel like we play fast, play physical, play smart, play together. Was there a chip on y'all's shoulder after the way the season went last year in terms of just working this off season and in the spring? Yes, sir. I feel like it is a chip on our shoulder. I mean, like I said, the mistakes that we made last year, we we, we faced them. Now we're learning from them, and we're making sure that we don't make those same mistakes again. Is there one player game that stands out to you that you think about that you wish, if I could go back, I'd, I'd do this differently? Um, well, I mean, if I go back and watch every game, I'm pretty sure I have something to say about every game that I wish I would have played, but I wish I would have seen, I wish I would have realized that this is what I'm trying to do. So I feel like that by every game that we play. Cool, I want to ask you. Offense, uh, you think you're more prepared for that this year? Say it again. Uh, Tennessee's offense going against that past typical offense. Do you think you're more prepared for yourself and as a defense you know, this year against that offense again? Well, right now we're working on um, fall camp and entering um, week one and making sure that we had the identity that we need and finding the identity that we need for week one. So. And Kool-Aid, talk about your relationship with T-Rock. I mean, he's taken over the entire secondary now. He's developed a lot of pros where he's been. He's been in the SEC his whole career. How's he helped you with your game? And what have you guys been kind of talking about in the offseason and getting in the lab and, and making you better? Just like you were saying, the facts and all the stuff that he have done make players like guys like us. Um, <laughs> Listen to everything he's saying because of the things that he had done and trust him. And you know, just like it's about the coaches trusting us, it's about us trusting them. So just seeing the stuff that he have done and the things that he have did, and we just focus and trust him a lot. What's the things you worked on this year that you think will get you to the next level? Going into I've been working on, you know, just staying focused the whole game. You know, not um, 
getting like a day of school and technique and just being more focused and staying consistent. Playing the whole 70 plays or however many games, I mean, however many plays are in the game. Has it sunk in that the leadership piece of this, like Coach Saban brought you here, like the expectations are ramping up for you for this year? Does that, how does that impact you and is it a motivator? Um, yes, sir, Barry. It, it, it really is because it's an honor to be here and um, I know I'm much of me as a coach, um, big players to come here. So.